Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I'm kind of cheating a little bit with the nine-month guitar challenge. Instead of doing the update that I was originally going to do, we are doing a guitar unboxing. And as you can probably tell already, both from the title of this video and the box that you see in front of you right now, we have a Gibson guitar. Now, this is my first ever Gibson guitar, and I was only able to get this because, now don't freak out, I sold my Telecaster, my American professional Telecaster in butterscotch blonde, the last of the standard American Telecasters that have ash bodies. I sold it, and I got almost what I paid for it new two years ago, and I was able to purchase this Gibson. Um, don't worry. I still love Telecasters, and there will be more on that later. But a few months ago, maybe even more, six months ago, I was in a guitar center, and they had a used Les Paul special. And I picked it up off the wall. I had never really played a Gibson before. I mean, I, I had fooled around with my friend's SG in the past, and I think I had played some Gibson acoustics, but had never really played a Gibson and was never really on that side. If you think about the great battles in history, Mac versus PC or Xbox versus PlayStation, I was always more on the Fender side in the Fender versus Gibson wars. Not that I cared that much either way, but I always kind of gravitated towards the single coil Fender thing. So I had never really gone for a Gibson, but after playing that Les Paul special, I kind of got an itch. And I guess that was almost a year ago now that I think about it. And I've been thinking about that Les Paul for a long time. And I finally decided that I was going to sell my Telecaster and pick up a Gibson. So we have one in this box here. So I'm going to open it up for you, show you what it looks like, go through some of the sounds that you can get out of it, and just sort of give you my first impressions of my very first Gibson USA guitar, a Les Paul Special. So let's get this thing open. Well taped. <laughs> Can't even get into it. Aha, uh -huh. I think we're in. That's the crazy thing is my Telecaster basically paid for this brand new Gibson. Guitars are holding their value like crazy lately. All right, we've got a lot of packing materials. I'm just gonna try to throw over there. Well, here we go. We have our brown Gibson hard case here. Seems nice, fairly nice quality. I'm gonna pop this over here and take a look at the guitar. Okay. That smells good. That's the smell of nitro. I've never really smelled the smell of nitro. Mmm, that smells delicious. A little bit of fuzz on the switch tip here. Let me, let me show it to you now. There it is. This is part of the Gibson original line. It is their Les Paul special. This is in the vintage cherry finish. I chose the Vintage Cherry because it seems like everyone and their monkey buys the um, TV yellow version of this, and I just wanted something a little bit different. I know that it's kind of anachronistic because the TV yellow finish was used on this kind of Les Paul special back in the day. I don't think it was until late 50s, like maybe 58 or 59, I'm sure someone can correct me, when they did the double cut version that they started doing this Vintage Cherry, or it might have been in, once they switched to the SG style for the Les Pauls. Um, so you wouldn't have seen this color on this kind of guitar, but this isn't a vintage guitar. It's not really trying to be a vintage guitar. It's just a really nice standard basic Les Paul Special made in Gibson USA. Um, I heard the neck was fairly chunky, like a 50s style chunky neck. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem that big to me. My Telecaster had the deep C neck profile that Fender has. And it's not that much different, I don't think, as far as depth. 
<clears throat> I like a little larger neck anyway because I have big hands and I like to put my thumb over. This feels really nice actually. Um, a little nitro sticky -y, but I'm sure that'll wear in. It smells amazing. It's got binding on the fingerboard, rosewood fingerboard, I think medium jumbo frets, uh, 12 inch radius, two Gibson P90s, which I'm pretty excited about. I've never really used a P90 guitar. I like single coils, and these are basically, from what I've heard, just kind of hot single coils. Maybe halfway in between a Fender single coil and a Gibson humbucker style. Two volume, two, two tone knobs here, so you can manipulate each pickup sound individually. Three-way selector switch. We have rhythm, treble, in between position. Looks like my little poker chip, oh there we go, was slightly off center but now it's not. Maybe I need to tighten down that washer there. We'll see. I've heard horror stories about Gibson quality control in the past. Um, so I've always been kind of leery about getting a brand new Gibson. But from this cursory inspection, I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me. The binding looks good. Everything looks pretty good. I'll give you some better close-up views of this later. The weight is great. I actually found it at a place called Alto Music. Oh, it is not in, in, not in tune right now. Um, and they were really nice. They opened up the guitars they had. They weighed them for me. They took pictures for me because I didn't want, you know, if I was going to get a Les Paul, I wouldn't care maybe as much about the weight or I would accept the fact that it was going to weigh quite a bit. But a Les Paul Special doesn't have the carved maple top and I wanted something that was lighter. And this one supposedly was seven pounds, seven ounces when they, when they weighed it. So that just seemed about perfect to me. Really like the weight, really like the feel of it. I should get it on a strap to see if it's like neck divey or anything. But let me put it in its case again and I'll show you some nice close up pictures and then we'll get this tuned up and we'll see what it sounds like. Let's see what we've got here. I tuned it up. Um, I'm a little worried about tuning stability because I've heard that Gibsons can be pretty bad with tuning stability, but it seems like it's staying in tune now. Obviously, it's only been a few minutes. Um, of course, with my old Telecaster, that thing was just rock solid. I could sit it there for days and not have to change the tuning, really. But we'll see about that. Um, I've got it plugged into my pedal board. It's actually going into my AC-15 now. The volume is very low, so I'm not going to be able to open it up really wide. Um, but just for comparison, if you guys have been watching my other videos, like the Guitar Challenge videos, when you hear my Telecaster, it's usually not coming through my amp. It's usually going directly into a Fender Mustang Micro headphone amp and then into my computer just to make things easier. But I wanted you to actually hear it coming from an amp, but bear in mind, that it can't be very loud because I'm in my apartment. But I've got the um, top boost channel so it's like close to break up and then the master volume is just, just barely up. So, um, first of all, just the, you know, unamplified sound. It seems really resonant. And it seems to just ring for a very long time. Just give me an E. So you'll be hearing that through my lapel mic. Sounds quite nice. Now this has a 12 inch radius and I'm used to narrower radius. It's like seven and a quarter, nine and a half. I haven't noticed too much of a difference. I mean, I can tell it's flatter, but it doesn't seem to have affected my playing very much. I've barely done anything on this guitar so far, but seems fine. I like the feel of the bound neck. That feels good. Um, just figuring out the volume and tone. I guess we've got bridge, volume, bridge, tone, and then um, neck, volume, neck, tone. 
Um, the bridge is kind of interesting because it's just this wraparound bridge, very simple wraparound bridge where the intonation can't be um, adjusted individually, even less so than on like a Telecaster three saddle style bridge. So I was checking the intonation. It's pretty close. It's a little rougher here on the low E side. So I may adjust that. I guess there's little Allen keys in the back where you can sort of adjust each side back and forth. We'll see. I'm not expecting the intonation to be perfect on this because it's a very simple sort of stripped down design. It doesn't have the, uh, what is that called? ABR1 bridge like the Les Paul standards and stuff had at the time. But uh, that's kind of the point. It's like a little stripped down hot rod kind of guitar. So let's hear what this sounds like. This is bridge pickup tone on full and just close to break up in the amp. Interesting. Still going. <laughs> you could put that down, have a bite, and come back, and it would still be playing. Um, so that's just somewhat clean on the bridge. If we go to the rhythm pickup, turn that up. That's tone on full as well. seems to have a little more bottom end than, well, I don't want to say more than my Telecaster did necessarily, but there's a different character. It definitely does seem kind of more humbuckery. So let's put a little overdrive in the bridge. Actually, I'm going to throw, so that was totally dry, no reverb or anything. I'm going to throw a little reverb on. Maybe a little compression. So it's going to get a little louder because these are basically single coil pickups. Then throw, actually I'll take the compression off. Bit of reverb, and I can already say where I had this, or not reverb, overdrive, where I had this overdrive pedal um, set. It's the full tone OCD. That wasn't as much overdrive on my Telecaster as it is on this. I'm assuming these are just higher output pickups. They're hotter, so it's overdriving the overdrive pedal more. It's giving more input into the pedal. Because that's a lot. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's go, I wanna see what we can do here. I know this isn't a humbucker guitar, but it's a little more humbucker-ish than my single coil fenders that I was used to. So we're gonna go into the uh, neck position. We're gonna roll the tone all the way back. That's pretty good. Let's try it with some fuzz instead here. 
Oh boy. Even with the tone all the way rolled off and in the neck position, that's kind of a usable thing. And typically this fuzz would make it sound so woofy and bassy, but that actually works pretty well. So you've got pretty wide range of frequencies, it seems like, to work with with this guitar. Obviously, this is just my first time playing with it. But I don't know, that just seems like there are a lot of overtones and harmonic information. and it does seem to have a lot of sustain. It feels good, seems to play great. I guess all of these Gibsons are plecked from the factory, and I'd say, I wouldn't say this is a very, very low action or anything. I don't know, it looks maybe 5 64th-ish uh, around on the low E side, so not super low or anything, but it feels nice that Shorter Gibson scale, or scale length is interesting to me. I'm not really used to how that feels. I think this has 10s on it, and I had 10s on my Telecaster, and it definitely felt like stiffer, and you had to fight it a little more maybe. And so I'm used to having to kind of wrench on it a little bit more than I am with this. I think I need a little bit of a lighter touch because it's easy for me to kind of go off the fingerboard or just in general kind of maybe push it out of key a little bit or uh, push it sharp or push it flat because I'm hitting it harder. Definitely feels slinkier on this, I think it's 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length as opposed to the 25 and a half scale length on my old Fender. I don't know, it feels pretty good though. I'm pretty happy with this. I have always been intrigued by Gibsons, and if I were going to get a Gibson, this is the one I wanted. Kind of a stripped down Les Paul. Obviously, it doesn't have humbuckers, so it's not the classic kind of Les Paul sound that you think about, but the P90s, I think, are just going to be more my style. So, look forward to seeing more from this guitar on the channel. I will be playing this pretty much exclusively. Obviously, I play my Rickenbacker too, but this will probably be my primary guitar for the foreseeable future, and you will be seeing it more on the channel, and I just can't wait to just figure this out. It's a new guitar. I, would, I was very used to my Telecaster, and now I've got to get used to this. The new beast. My Les Paul Special in Vintage Cherry. I think she's beautiful. Still going.